Hey everyone. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to visualize categorical uh, variables in R using the bar plot function in just base R. Um, there's lots of ways that you can visualize categorical data. Um, sometimes in magazines or online, we may see pie charts, um, but our preference is bar plots because you can sort of see more detail. And especially when there are things that are similar um, or categories that are similar to one another, it's a little bit easier to visualize in R. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna break this into two videos. Um, I'm gonna show you the most basic one that we talk about in chapter two, descriptive statistics of our book, Basic Statistics for the Behavioral and Social Sciences Using R. Um, and later on, I'll create another video where I show you how to uh, visualize two um, categorical variables together. But for now, I'm going to show you just how to visualize one. And I've loaded the hospital data set that we talk about in chapter two of our text, and you have information on how to access that. And uh, I just clicked this little spreadsheet icon so I can see that we have a bunch of variables here. In fact, uh, we have 19 variables. And um, we have a bunch of uh, categorical variables here, like gender, ED admit, uh, age and length of stay are uh, continuous variables, but also marital, spouse, discharge, and so on. Uh, so I'm going to show you this first with ED admit, and um, just to get a sense as to what is in there, I'm just going to go to the HMIS package, um, and I'm going to use uh, the describe function, and I'm going to use the dollar sign convention. So we could have more than one data set open at the same time. Um, and we just specify which one we want by putting the name of the data set and a dollar sign. And then, of course, everything comes up. And uh, when I do that, I can see that we have 26 patients that were admitted to the hospital through the emergency department, which is 52% of the patients in our sample. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you this in a very step-by-step -step manner so you can see um, what each of the options are as we go. And, um, but the first thing I have to do is take my ED admit data and sort it into groups of being, yes, being admitted to the hospital through the emergency department or not. So I'm gonna create a vector and you can call it anything. I'm gonna call it ED and I'm gonna assign it the value, so that less than and dash, and I'm gonna sort it by doing a table of ED admit. And when I, oops, I didn't put in my hospital and dollar sign. Now you see up in your values, you have a vector called ED, and if we type ED to display what's in there, it is these 24 no's that we have here, the 26 yeses. And once we do that, we can just use our bar plot function to create a basic bar plot uh, with those counts. And when we hit enter, um, we see the no's are you know, just slightly below this 25 and the yeses above this. And this is a very basic bar graph, but it doesn't give us all that much information because unless somebody is standing here telling you that this is patients admitted to the emergency, uh, to the hospital via the emergency department, um, you don't know what this is. It could be, we don't know what's on this y-axis, what this represents, and we certainly don't know what no and yes represent. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just use my up arrow in the console, and that takes me to my last command, and I'm gonna um, go inside the parentheses and put a comma, and I'm gonna create a uh, label for the y-axis, which that is ylabe. And by the way, many packages that um, do visualizations use this ylabe to label a y-axis. So I'm gonna put that in equals, and then in quotation marks, I can really put anything that I want. So I'm gonna put frequency, because this is the counts of this. And if I hit enter, you will see that this is just enhanced now because it cre recreated that bar plot and put that label there. Um, so now I can continue to enhance this. Um, I personally, when I'm thinking about my y-axis, I like to see 
um, my y-axis go at least as high as the highest bar. So um, I'm going to use my F arrow again. And I can put limits on my axis uh, by putting y lim equals, and then this is going to um, set the parameters. So we want to start at zero, and we want to go up, say, through 30. That will be helpful. And again, if I hit enter, then the bars get a little shorter, it appears to be, because, um, because our y-axis goes higher. And now I can put one more enhancement, and I'm going to give this, graph, this whole bar plot a main title, and I'm going to put it here. And it doesn't really matter, by the way, what order these options go into. Um, but to put a main label, I'm going to say main equals, and in quotation marks, again, we can um, put anything we want. So patients admitted from ED. And there we have a really nice, uh, simple bar plot. And now this is a little bit more useful. So um, I can save this. And I'm going to copy it to a clipboard. And once I do that, I can um, really do anything that I want. Like I could create, oops, um, I could create a PowerPoint presentation and um, embed it in there. So I'm going to create a blank presentation and uh, just create a new slide that's blank. And notice if I uh, hit Control V, then I have, I just embedded this. So this is really nice. You can do this in Word. You can really do it in anything. Um, but notice I cannot um, make any changes to this here. It's just an image. If I want to make changes, I need to do this in here. Now, a lot of the times bar plots, um, we show frequencies. The other way we might want to do this is to show a percentage. Um, so I'm going to actually just go back. Oops to my previous command. And I'm gonna, for now, take off my Y limit. Well, no, I know what my limits will be. Um, and what I'm gonna do is annotate this. So instead of having, I wanna know the proportions, um, with the per, actually the percentages. So I'm gonna use the prop table function, so prop.table ed, um, but I wanna multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. So now this is gonna change our frequency. It's no longer frequency, it's a percent. So I'm gonna put a little percentage sign. And we know our highest bar is gonna be at 52%. So we'll change this to 55. And I think our main label should still be okay. If I hit enter, um, you'll see, whoops. Uh, not, oh, because now here's an error that we had. It's not really an error, but we put our um, limit to our y-axis at 55%, but this is giving us increments of 10. So we could respecify that, or I could just go up to 60, and then our uh, the height of our uh, y-axis will be high enough. And be, just before I showed you how to save that as a... Um, copy and paste it, I'm going to show you that I can save this as an image to my desktop. And um, I want to save it in JPEG format. And I want to put this on my desktop. I'll show you and that you can access it later. Let's say you know you want to save your work, but you're not quite sure that you're ready to embed it in anything. And then you just, um, oops, we'll just call this a sample PDF. And if I hit save, um, there I am. And um, when I go to my desktop, um, and there's my sample PDF, and there it is. So then I can have this for later. Um, you can do all kinds of other things. You can resize these things. Um, you can change the color. I typically just use 
black and white and grayscale simply because of the format that I use. But if you were doing a snazzy presentation, you could embed color and all that. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video and um, find it useful.